So when you have a hand that's five in one suit and five in another at least, you don't really need many points to do well on a hand like this, especially if you can find a fit with partner in one suit, let alone if you find a fit in both suits. And these hands declare a lot better than they defend. Because if you think about it, if you've got 10 cards in two suits, then you'll only have three cards in the other suits. And that means the opponents are very likely to have length in the other suits. So you're not going to do very well if you're trying to defend, but you'll do very well if you're declaring. So if we've got a hand that's quite weak and the other side opens the bidding and you want to make an overcall, the problem with two suited hands is if you call one of your suits and you don't have a lot of points, by the time the bidding comes back to you and you want to show your other suit, sometimes it's too high. So Michael's Cubids, which is the topic for today, is a marvellous way of being able to show partner that you've got two suits in the one bid. So this is how they work. And they only require somewhere between eight and any number of points to do it. But you do need to have at least five cards in each suit. So let's say the opponents open one club on your right and you're next to speak and you've got a hand <clears throat> that's got two suits in the majors. Your bid is two clubs. You take their bid for your own purpose. If they open one diamond and you bid two diamonds, which doesn't make sense that you would want to play that in diamonds, it means you've got both majors. So if they open a minor and you, the next direct hand, bid two of their suit, you're showing both majors and you've given partner a lot of information about your hand. If they open a major, one heart or one spade, and you go and bid their major, well, you're showing the other major, five cards at least, and a minor. Partner doesn't know which minor, but they will know that you have a minor. And so they can find that out during the auction if they need to. So what you're doing is you're making a bid. And it's called a Michael's Cubid when it's an overcall. Cubids are all over bridge and anyone can make a Cubid. But the definition of a Cubid is when you make a bid in a suit in which everybody knows you wouldn't reasonably be expected to want to play. So when the opponents open a suit and you bid their suit, everyone knows you wouldn't want to play in it. So we're using it for our own purpose which is a great thing about competitive bidding, we can actually take the opponent's bids and use them for our purpose. So let's look at this hand. And we've got six clubs and five hearts. And by the way, a Michael's Q bid doesn't require a lot of points, but it sure requires good shape. And this auction starts where <clears throat> East, our right-hand opponent, opens with one spade. And should we show clubs? Should we show hearts? If we're playing Michael's Cubids, we can actually show both suits at once. We can show two suits. So if we bid two spades, we're saying to partner, we have at least five hearts and a minor. They don't know which minor but the bidding on this hand now goes four spades. Their partner has made a preemptive jump to four spades. That means they'll have a lot of spades and probably not much else. Now partner comes to life and they make a very unusual bid. They bid four no trumps. And what that's saying is, partner, I know you've got hearts and a minor, and I don't want to play in hearts. I want you to tell me which minor you've got. 
And it wouldn't matter at which level partner bids no trumps when you're playing Michael's Q bids, because it's always saying, please tell me about your minor. So four no trumps here would never be the Blackwood Convention because we need to know that there's a suit that's been agreed before we can use Blackwood. So even if the bidding was one spade, two spades past two no trumps, partner would be asking for our minor. Three no trumps wouldn't be to play in no trumps. It'd be saying, what's your minor? So here it's very high, but over four spades, partner bids five no trumps. That's an inquiry. The next hand passes and we bid five clubs. And the bidding is passed out. So partner North will need to have both minors in order to be able to deal with the fact that we've had clubs, we've bid clubs. So let's have a look at their hand. The lead is the ace of spades. And here's the dummy. Sure enough, they had a lovely 5-5 five, five in both minors and only a singleton in our other suit. So let's make a plan to make 11 tricks, if we can, in five clubs. So with the plan, we look at our definite winners at first, and then we've got to look at our losers. And we've got a huge club fit. 11 cards in clubs, so certainly no losers in clubs. And we've got the King of Hearts, the Ace and the Queen of Hearts, so no losers in hearts. Only one loser in spades, because uh, we can trump after that. And only one loser in diamonds, because we've got a singleton in the south hand. So this hand should play really well in five clubs. So we'll just follow I'll go through some of the cards. We probably won't have to play all the cards and they'll continue a spade and we trump. Now, it won't take much to get rid of trumps. And they've gone now. Next plan is to play a hard up to the king. and cross over with the trump suit. That's one of the great things. The trump suit's fantastic for using to cross from one hand to the other. So we'll cross over to the seven and now play the ace of hearts, throwing a diamond away, the queen of hearts, throwing another diamond away. <clears throat> I think you can see now that we would trump these hearts. We only need to trump one up in the north hand and we'll have one diamond to lose. So we can play a diamond and it's a guess, but, it, but we will lose a diamond. So let's try the king. It loses to the ace and they try, they don't know what to try, but they come back with a heart say we trumpet and all the rest of the tricks are ours because that heart, the eight of hearts is a winner and we've only got trumps. So we can claim. So let's click the, the claim button and we'll happily, we've made five clubs. So the opponents quickly jumped to four spades on this hand. Now that you can see the four hands, they made a preemptive raise to four spades. They are not going to make four spades, but it was still a good idea for them to jump to four spades because the law of total tricks applies here. And that is that in a competitive auction, you need to jump to the size of your trump fit. So they had five spades, their new partner had five spades, but we had 11 cards in clubs and we found the club fit via using Michael's cubids. So over to you for a minute or two before I start the next hand to see if there are any questions about that hand. All good? Okay, let's go on to the next hand.
And this time, we have not much of a hand, do we? We've got only four spades to the ace. So we would, can everyone see the next hand? I've, I can see a question and this is a very interesting question, so let's answer it now. Some say that we don't use two suited overcalls with any strength. That's definitely the case. And so you need to talk to your partner about this. In many books, it'll say you use two suited overcalls with either weak or very strong hands. So that's about eight to 10 points or 18 plus, really strong hands. And that you don't use Michaels with those intermediate hands from about 12, 11, up to 15 or 16 points. And the idea is that if you've got a weak hand, you really need to use Michael's cubids so that you can get the message out to partner at about the fact that you've got two suits. And if you've got a very strong hand, same thing applies. But the theory is that if you've got middling hands, you can show your higher suit first. And then even though the auction jumps and by the time it comes around to you, you can show your second suit later. And so the idea is that if you've got a weak hand, you can't really bid one suit and then be having to bid your second suit at the three or even the four level. So you need to talk to your partner about whether you want to play weak or strong. I actually recommend that you play them throughout that a Michael's Q-bid, a two-suited weak hand might be weak, might be medium, might be strong. I would still do it because I think it's actually easier than trying to work out what is a medium hand and what is not a medium hand. So it's definitely something for you to talk about with your partner. Okay, so here's the next hand. And we don't have much of a hand, do we? We've only got four spades to the ace. So we definitely pass. Our left-hand opponent opens one club. And partner, having just learnt Michael's cubids, bids two clubs. They're showing both majors, at least 5-5. Five, five. The next hand, East, suddenly leaps to three no trumps. They're showing a lot of points. Now, we're round to us and we've got to make a decision what to do. Should we pass three no chumps and probably let them score 430 or 400? Or should we make a sacrifice and should we bid? We know partner has at least five spades and five hearts. So on this hand, I think we should bid four spades. It's not about points when you're making a decision like that. It's about the shape of your hand. And the beauty of this hand is that you've got four spades for partner and you've got a singleton heart. You might be able to set up the heart suit by trumping. That's one of the great uses of a trump suit. It's being able to establish a second suit by trumping. So today we're going to be very daring and bid four spades. And we're expecting to be doubled, but we might push the opponents to something that they can't make. We might have also made them make a mistake in their bidding. But no, today they say double. So it goes pass, pass, pass. And the lead is the king of clubs. And here's the dummy. Sure enough, Partner had five spades and five hearts and two one in the short suits. <clears throat> so if you think about it, the opponents have a lot of points. Partner's only got three and one and four and four are eight plus the length in the two long suits. But high card points, they've only got eight and we've got four. That's 12 high card points between us. That leaves an awful lot of points with East-West. 
And as you can see, <clears throat> we've got no, nothing in the miners. We, and partners got great shortage in the miners. And we've got no honours. So the way that East West would be planning to make their three-note trumps is by taking tricks in the minor suits. And that's why it's probably a very good idea for us to be in four spades, because we've got no defensive power at all on this hand. So we lose a club, and West can see that there are no clubs in dummy, so they switch to a diamond. And East likes that, so they play another diamond. So we've lost three tricks. At this point, East is not quite sure what to play, but it's not wrong to force the long hand to trump. So they play at club and we trump. Often with two suited hands that don't have a lot of points, it's not a good idea to touch trumps first, because if we draw trumps, we'll actually take two of our trumps at once. And what we'd really like to do is use the trumps separately. So let's look at the heart suit. Play the ace of hearts. And now trump a heart. Now we want to cross back up to the north hand to trump another heart. So we can play a club or a diamond, trump, down comes the jack of clubs. Now we play another heart, trumpet, and our hearts are nearly established. There's only the king of hearts out now. So let's play a diamond, trumpet. On this hand, we don't know how the trumps are going to break against us. If they are 2-2, two, two, we'll drop the queen. But if they're 3-1, we won't. So play one more heart. This time, East discards the king of diamonds and we trump. Down comes the king of hearts. Now we've made seven tricks. We're going to make eight, the ace of spades, nine, the king of spades. It's unlikely, but we might make 10 tricks. So the club nine we could play or the diamond 10, which is a winner. And we can discard a heart, but they trump. So now we'll take the next two tricks because we've got the top trumps. So here's the hand. The result was that we went down by one, but that would be minus 100 because we were doubled. We played four spades, made nine tricks, and lost 100 points. But let's look at the East-West cards. If they had been left in two no trumps, in three no trumps, how many tricks would they have taken? As we diagnosed before, they would have actually taken five club tricks and four diamond tricks. And if we'd led spades, we'd have taken the king and then their spade queen would eventually make a trick. So in fact, we can take three top tricks against them in three no trumps and they would have taken 10 tricks for 430. So what we did, which was called a sacrifice, was a far better thing than letting them play three no trumps. So the fact that the partner was able to show both suits here in one bid was really great because we knew a lot more about their hand and we knew it in one bid. So that's how Michael's works. Does anyone have any questions about this hand? I'll wait for a few minutes, and if there are any other questions, I'll answer them, and then we'll go on to the next hand.
Okay, well let's let's move to the next hand. By the way, everyone, if you'd if you'd like notes from this lesson, they will be posted on my website so that you can print them out and have a read. And there is a bit of a delay, so I'll wait another minute or two so that if you've got questions, I can take them about this hand. Oh, someone's asked me a question and I think what they're asking is, what would be the weakest sort of hand to make a Michael's cubid? And I'd say this one, as usual, if you're going to advertise two suits, you really need to have good suits. So I mean, ace, 10, nine, always look to at the tens and nines. Those middle cards in your suits make the suit a lot better than if it just was ace, six, five, four, three. But this would be almost the bottom range, I think. Four and three are seven and one are eight. We would like to have two good suits and I think about eight points is the lowest, but you do need to have your honours in the suits. Some people like to do really daring things and make Michaels with only 10 high in a suit, but I don't think it works. It certainly doesn't work for me. And the last thing you want is to have honours in your short suits. So, I hope that that answers your question. And it's a very wide range if you're going to start with eight points and not stop up until about 20 points. But still, if you have, partner's not always going to go to game. So if you happen to have a very strong hand, then of course you would take the bidding further. And if you had say six, five shape, because it's all about shapes on these hands, then you might make another bid. But you don't always go to game when you're making a Michael's Q bid. So I'll go on to the next hand and I'd like to talk about something that matches Michael's Q bids. And that's on this hand. I haven't mentioned yet, but there is a gadget called the unusual two-no trumps. And that's part of our two-suited overcall hands. And if they open, if the opponents open in a major and your partner bids two-no trumps, that won't be a strong hand. It won't be 20, 21 or 22 points. Because if they had a strong hand and someone opened, they would probably start with double if they had a strong balanced hand. So the unusual two note trumps is where someone's opened in a major and your partner bids two note trumps, which shows both minor suits. You can also do that, the unusual, um, an unusual part of Michael's, if they open in a minor and your partner bids two no trumps. I'll talk about that later. But for the moment, on this hand, the bidding goes one spade from west and our partner bids two no trumps. That's showing at least five clubs and at least five diamonds. And it's probably not a strong hand, it might be, but at the moment it could be about eight points with two reasonable suits. The next hand makes a preemptive jump to four spades. And now this time we're not in any concern about which suit to bid because we know that partner has diamonds and clubs. So we would bid five clubs. And the bidding goes pass. Pass, pass. The lead is the Queen of Spades. And here's the dummy. Sure enough, partner had exactly what they said. They've got two and one a three and one a four and four are eight and two are ten and one are eleven high card points and a magnificent shape. Six, five. 
These hands, as I said before, play very well if you're declarer and very poorly if you're not declarer. So we found a great club fit, 10 card club fit. And of course we need to make the plan on this hand. The plan's everything when you're a declarer. Don't ever start to play to the first trick until you know what you're going to do. And the plan consists of saying, where are our winners and losers in the beginning? And what do we need to do to find the tricks that we need to make our contract? And then the final part of the plan, before you play a single card, is to say, how am I going to play this hand? Am I going to draw trumps first? Do I have entries to cross from the hand that I need to get from over to the other hand? These considerations are very important before you play a card. So let's do it on this hand. We've got 10 clubs and they're all the top ones, so we'll make five club tricks. We're missing the ace and the king of hearts, but because there's a singleton heart in the north hand, we'll only lose one heart. And with spades, we're missing the ace of spades, and, but there's a singleton in the north hand, so we'll make the king eventually because they've led the queen. And in diamonds, we might have a diamond loser because we don't know where the diamond king is. So we need to take the diamond finesse. So part of our plan is that if we're going to take the diamond finesse, the hand we need to be in to start the finesse, in other words, to play the 10 of diamonds, is the south hand. So we're considering that and we know that when we draw trumps, we need to end up in the south hand. So we'll follow suit, they win the ace and we play the two. <clears throat> now they need to defend properly here because if they continue spades by mistake, we would play the king and we would discard our only losing heart. But today they're not making mistakes, so they play the nine of hearts and win the king. Down comes our jack. And now it's very hard for them to know what to do. So they might play another spade to force dummy. It won't help. We can discard and we win the king of spades. So we've got 10 trumps. Easy to now play the ace of trumps, noticing how they fall. And now the king of trumps. Or it doesn't matter, we'll play, let's play a smaller trump because we've got all the trumps. I want it to be in the south hand so that we can take the diamond finesse. So play the ten of diamonds, it goes three, we hold our breath, play the four, and sure enough, it holds the trick. So the diamond finesse has worked, which is great, and we're going to make all the rest of the tricks now because we've got no losing hearts, because we've got three trumps in the north hand for those hearts, and we've got the ace of diamonds, queen of diamonds, jack of diamonds, and although the king's out, we'll be able to trump. So this contract has made 11 tricks. So I'm going to claim and leave it for you. I'll give you a few minutes to see if there are any questions about the unusual Two no trumps. Questions coming. I've just been told a question's coming, so I'm very happy to hear the questions and the two unusual two no trumps, the range of points is the same as with the Michaels Cubid, and it's part of the whole thing. Beautiful two suited hands. So it's not so important the points, it's important the shape. Well, ah, someone's asked me a question which is not exactly about this hand, but I'm happy to answer it. And they want to know 
can you make a Michael's cubid in the balancing seat? So let me just explain for people who maybe are not sure of the two positions that you can sit. If someone opens the bidding and you make a direct bid immediately over the opener, you're known as the person in the direct seat. But if the bidding starts on your right, say, and they open and you pass and the next hand passes, now your partner, if they make a bid, it's in the balancing seat. And the balancing seat means that if they don't bid, the hand will be passed out and they're the last to speak. So the question is, does Michael's cubids, do they apply in the balancing seat? The answer is yes. If the bidding went one heart, pass, pass, and your partner bid two hearts, that would be a Michael's cubid, saying I have at least five spades and five of a minor, and you would bid accordingly. So on this hand, the unusual two note trumps is where the opponents have opened, they opened one spade, partner bid two note trumps showing both minors. And let me say again, that it's certainly not going to be a strong hand. They won't have 20 points because the way to describe a balance 20 points is by doubling first and then telling partner that you've got a big balanced hand. So jumping in no trumps is the unusual. And it says exactly what this hand has. I've got both minors and partner, I'd like to play if I possibly can. And sure enough, this is lucky that we had such a great club fit. We had no doubt as to where to play this hand. If the opponents had decided, because when we bid five clubs, it also gives the opponents a bit of a problem. Do they bid on? Because after all, if we're declaring in clubs, because we've got a lot of clubs, then their hand won't play very well if we're declaring in clubs because they haven't got many. So they have to think to themselves, should we bid one more over five clubs or should we double them or should we pass? Well, this is one of the most difficult questions in bridge really, particularly when you have to make your decision at the five level. In general, people say, don't bid five over five. And what they mean is that if we go to five clubs, generally it's not a good idea to bid five spades over five clubs, but sometimes it works. And the times that it works are when you've got a really big trump fit, when your trump fit is extreme or you've got two suits. So if we look at this hand and imagine that the opponents decided to bid five spades over our five clubs, would they make it? No, they wouldn't on this hand. They've got 10 spades and eight hearts, so they've sort of got a double fit, but they'd lose one club. And the heart situation, if you can see the four hands, is interesting. It's possible that they would not lose a heart at all and they've definitely got a spade loser because we've got the king and they have a diamond loser. So it's possible that they'd lose one, they'll definitely lose one diamond, one spade, one club, and if they played it really carefully, they may not lose a heart. And most people would perhaps play the ace of hearts and king of hearts. If they were in four spades, they would, some people would be able to make four because when they played the ace of hearts and they saw the jack fall, they might cross back to the east hand and now they might take the finesse against the queen. And if they played a low heart, having played the ace first and seen the jack fall, if they played a low heart and played the 10, then it would hold the trick. So they would lose no hearts and only one spade, one diamond and one club. But a lot of people would probably play the ace of hearts and the king of hearts 
and now they would lose a heart trick, so they wouldn't make four spades. But either way, we don't mind because we made five clubs. Okay, let's look at the next hand. And we, um, the person, we're the dealer. So what have we got? Two and three and five and one and six and four at ten points. Not enough to open, so we pass. The next hand opens one diamond. And partner, our marvellous partner, bids two diamonds. That's Michael's. That says, I have at least five five in both majors, hearts and spades. The next hand passes and we've got a decision to make. We clearly would like to play in hearts because we've got four of them. We know partner will have at least five and we've got a singleton spade. Plus we've got a few points in the minors. So the question is, do we want to bid three hearts or do we want to bid four hearts? Some people would want to bid four hearts because they would like to follow the idea that the more trumps we've got, the higher we should bid. And we might also cut the opponents out. But this hand, the opponents, East is not bidding at all. So maybe three hearts will do on this hand. Some people might like to bid four and some days you might bid four, but here, three hearts is usually preemptive. And it says, partner, I really love hearts. And the next hand passes and our partner goes four hearts. They might have a reason for bidding four hearts and we'll see it in a minute. So we're to Clara and it's four hearts and West has opened a diamond. So they lead a diamond three of diamonds and here's the dummy. When you have extreme shape, look how beautiful this north hand is. You've got ace, king, jack, ten, six times spades and five beautiful hearts, king, jack, nine, to match our queen, ten, and you've got a singleton in each minor. So really all those cards, or oh, the ace of diamonds is good, but we didn't need anything much in the minors. So that's possibly why partner went to four hearts because they had six, five shape. So when we bid three hearts though, and it's a preemptive bid, it's not asking partner or telling partner to go four. It's just saying, partner, I'd like to play three hearts because I really like hearts of your spades and hearts. I really like hearts. Usually you've got four of them when you jump like that. So let's make a plan on this hand. We've got one loser in trumps and after that we'll make four trumps in the long hand. We've got no losers in spades at all, have we? Because we've got such beautiful spades opposite a singleton. We've got a fantastic jack of diamonds opposite a singleton ace. And we've got a club loser, one club. So we'll probably lose one club and one heart. And if we make 10, it's fine, but we might even make 11. So let's play the Jack of Diamonds. They cover it with the King and we win the Ace. Now, as usual, don't play trumps yet because we don't want the opponents to be able to play the Ace of Trumps and another trump just in case we needed trumps for the spades. And please note that we've got all the top trumps, nine, 10, jack, queen, king, except the ace. So let's go for spades. We don't know how the spades are going to divide against us, but we'll play a spade to the ace and now trump a spade. Trump it low. And so far the opponents have followed. So we've seen seven spades, we've got four, that's 11. There are two spades out against us. We don't know whether they will fall one in each hand or two in one hand. So I still don't want to draw trumps yet. So I would play a diamond and trumpet. 
and now we could play a low spade and trump. Now this time we get the, we know the count on the spades because east discards a club. So we trump and now the nine appears. So if we've been doing the count on spades, we know for sure that west has the queen of spades left. We've got the king jack 10. So now the king will drop the queen. So it's okay now to start playing trumps. So let's play the queen. They win the ace. And they'll probably take their club winner. And we are not in any trouble on this hand now because the Queen of Spades is going to fall. There's not much they can do to us, so they probably will try another club. But what we do is trump the club and follow suit. We could have we could have won the King of Clubs, but play the King of Hearts to see how the hearts fall. And now the hearts are gone. Our Jack's good. Even if the hearts had been two in one hand, we could have played the King and then the Jack. Now the King of Spades, which we've set up, and down comes the Queen, and we've got the rest of the tricks. The jack's good, the ten's good, and the jack of hearts is a winner. So we can claim. So we actually made an overtrick on that hand. And that's because of the fantastic fit, the size of that trump fit. We had a nine card heart fit, and we didn't have a big spade fit, but the singleton allows us to trump in the south hand. So this shape, 6-5, means that even if we didn't have as many points as that, it's worth going to game. So have a look at the um, hands, everyone, and just be sure that you're happy with the fact that we could make 11 tricks. We probably would have made 11 tricks if we'd drawn trumps on this hand, but often you try to establish that second suit by trumping. And that's one of the absolute beauties and the huge advantages of having two suited hands. If we find a fit in one, we can establish the other and the first one is the trump fit. Let alone if we find a double fit, that's even better. So again, I say these hands declare well, they don't defend well and the other side are often fighting to play their contract because they've got a lot of their own trumps. So I'll leave it for a minute so that anyone can ask some questions on this hand and then we'll go on to the next hand. Uh, there are two questions. So the one, question one is, can Michael's, ah, not lo lovely questions today. So the first one is, can you use Michael's at the two level? For example, if the opponents open a week two and you bid three, let's say they go two spades, what would three spades mean? Well, that's a matter for you and your partner, but yes, Michael's cubids do apply over week twos. But if you really want to get into it, you need to Google this or go to my website and have a look. Um, there is something, it's really exciting, called Leaping Michael's. So you ask the question, I'm going to answer the question. So for people who are just learning Michael's, I don't want you to think about this. But what Leaping Michael's is, is the, as follows. If the opponents open a week two, say two spades, and if the next hand leapt to four clubs or four diamonds, this is called leaping Michaels. And it needs to be a strong hand. And what it's showing is a two suited hand with the other major and that minor. So two spades, 
four clubs, let's say, would be a hand with five hearts at least and five clubs. And remember, you've pu pushed partner to the game level, so you can't be weak with a leaping Michaels bid. So yes, Michaels does apply over week twos. If your partnership wants to play two spades, three spades as Michaels, that's fine. But I'm just mentioning leap, leaping Michaels. And someone's asking, is this unusual? One diamond past two diamonds and an immediate bid of two no trumps. Well, the answer to that is it depends whether the person has passed or not. Two no trumps, when they've gone one diamond, two diamonds, two no trumps, that would be a partnership agreement. If, if your partner had already passed, then it would be unusual because you certainly wouldn't be showing a strong hand. But if partner hadn't passed, you need to sort that out with your partner. Okay? Right, next hand. And we are, partner has, partner's the dealer, so partner passes, partner says pass, the next hand says pass, and we've got three and one are four and three are seven and two and nine and one are ten. Even though people do like to open light in third seat, I probably want to pass this hand. And the fourth hand opens one diamond. Partner comes to life with two diamonds, and that's Michael's, showing five, five at least in both majors. Now we know they won't have an opening hand, so they would be in the lower range. So they'll be, I don't know, up to about 11 points. They might be eight points to 11. And the next hand says pass. By the way, the partner of the opener is always fine to speak. And generally, if they double the Michael's Cupid, let's say in this instance, it went one diamond, two diamonds by partner, and they said double, the next hand doubled. It usually shows a desire to penalise at least one of the suits that the Michael's Cupid has shown. So that again, quite a lot of discussion about what a double would mean over Michael's. There's also a way of using our Michael's for your own purpose. And sometimes the partner of the opener might bid two hearts or two spades. And that would be a cue bid to tell opener they've got something very special. Again, these are things you really need to work out with your partner. But on this hand, they just pass. And we know partner has five spades and five hearts. So I think bidding two spades is a bit weak on this hand. We've got four trumps. So whenever you've got four trumps and you know partner's got five, the law of total tricks works nicely in that you know you've got at least nine spades. And so don't worry about points. It's not to do with points. You would bid three spades on this hand. And it goes pass, pass, pass. So this time we haven't reached game. And so we are declarer and the opponents make the opening lead of the ace of diamonds, which is, I'll talk to you about this when you can see the four hands. But now let's make our plan. Partner had only four and two are six and one are seven, one are eight high card points and two beautiful five card suits. But see this spade suit. This would be the worst, I think, in terms of quality for you to be showing that you've got spades. Sometimes if people have two suits and their second suit is awful, they choose to forget about it and they might just show one suit. But this hand, Jack 10 and three others, is just okay to make a Michael's Cubid. So let's make our plan. We've got two diamond losers because there's a doubleton up in the north hand. We've got one club loser, the ace, but after that we've got the king and the queen. 
We don't know where the King of Hearts is, so we would be planning to take the heart finesse. And we also don't know where the Ace and Queen of Spades are. So we need to make eight, nine tricks. We can lose two diamonds and one club for sure. We hope we'll only lose one spade. So not so sure of making this hand, but one of the good things is that if you don't make, often they were making something anyway. So they keep playing diamonds, hit a king, and their best defense is actually to play another diamond to the queen and you trump. Now you're up in this north hand, you don't particularly want to, you certainly don't want to take the heart finesse until you get to the south hand. So this time we do play trumps. We could play the jack of clubs and lose to the ace, but we could also play trumps because we need to know where the spades are. So we play the five, it goes queen, we win the king, and we expect the ace to take it, but it doesn't. So suddenly we've got a very good idea that East is holding the Ace and the Queen of Spades. We don't know how they break though. So perhaps at this point, we want to try the Heart Finesse because we've got to the South Hand and there are not many entries to the South Hand. So play the Jack of Hearts, they play the Seven and play the Two. Sure enough, the Finesse worked, thank goodness. Now, it doesn't really matter what you play because we know that the heart finesse is working. We could lose a club at this point and that, that sets up our king and queen. And now what are they going to do? They're in, it's not so easy for them either. So they play another club. Let's discard a heart and win the club with the king. And at this point, you could try spades. There's the ace. And they don't want to play a heart, so they'll play a club. This time we can win the queen of clubs and discard a heart. And the trumps have been drawn. We've made five tricks. We know where the heart king is, so let's go for it. Let's play the 10 of hearts, try the queen, it holds the trick. Now the ace of hearts, no trump, there aren't any trumps out, so nothing to worry about. Discard the club, down comes the king, and we can claim we've made our contract. So have a look at the hand everyone and we didn't have very many points as well here. The opponents might well have made something if they'd been in diamonds let's say but we made three spades. So the main point is that when you have a good fit for partners Michaels you want to show them by jumping and it's not saying I want you to go to game. It's saying, I just want you to know I've got trumps and I'm very pleased to be playing three spades. So I'll just leave it for some questions and I'd very much like to get on to the last hand of for today. And we've just got time and one question coming up. Two questions. How to show a hand with five fives in spades and diamonds if the opponent opens one club? Well, good, marvellous questions today. Thanks, everyone. How to show a hand with five spades and five diamonds if the opponents open one club? Well, Michael's traditionally and the unusual two no trumps, they don't allow for five, f uh, this situation, five spades and five diamonds. So usually you've just got to overcall one spade and then bid diamonds after that. And another marvellous question, what defence would I recommend um, the opponents using against people who bid Michaels? Well, it's a great question, but usually 
if the opponents have got a lot of points and we've got a lot of a Trump suit and we've got two suits, there's not much they can really do except take their tricks quickly, as many as they possibly can. Being passive when you're defending against Michaels doesn't really work because we're going to set up the second suit and draw trumps with the first suit. So the opponents sort of need to take their tricks or sometimes they need to bid. So we've just got time to look at this last hand. And this is one that I want to say happens regularly. So the dealers west and they open a diamond. And partner bids two diamonds, Michaels. Both majors, 5-5. Five, five. The next hand says pass. And here, look what we've got. We've got six beautiful clubs of our own, two hearts and two spades. Well, partner has advertised that they're only interested in playing in a major. They're not interested in the fact that we've got clubs. It's not going to help. There's no point in our bidding three clubs at all. We just need to pick a major. And this time we don't want partner to go bidding a lot because we've only got two cards in each of the suits. So we would just bid two hearts, bid the lower, and the bidding goes pass, partner passes, and it's passed out. So realistically, they lead the ace of diamonds, and you can see the dummy. Here we've got a 5-2 fit in hearts and a 5-2 fit in spades. This is not the greatest fit, but naturally we've only bid to the two level. So we should make quite well on this hand. We'll lose two diamonds, one club, and then as usual, our goal is to try to set up the spade suit by trumping. So we won't touch trumps because we've only got two down here. When we lose the diamonds, we don't have time to play this hand, but when we lose the diamonds, we should now go spade over to the ace. When we win a trick, spade the ace, a spade to the king and trump a spade in this south hand. That's the most uh, marvellous way is if you can recognise that trumping in the shorthand adds to your tricks, it's fantastic. So if we touch trumps, we wouldn't have any trumps left to deal with those spade losers. So uh, that's the way that we should approach the hand. So um, I'd like to thank you, everyone, for listening to this lesson. And let me say again that if you'd like notes, they'll be available in a special section when you go onto my website, which is joanbuttsbridge.com, and we will have a special section where you can click and download notes on the Michaels Cubid and the unusual two no trumps. So if there are no more questions, I look forward to seeing you next week when I'm going to be looking at a convention called Fourth Suit Forcing. Thanks, everyone.